This guy threw birthday parties on a yacht. Uh, all the wait waiters and waitresses was feds. And he was giving people presents for like the number one spots, giving them gold buckles with diamonds. It's just, you know, having guys sing for him. You know, Big Daddy Kane. This is most legendary shit. They wrote about it. You Google it. Yo, word on the streets is that you bought your whole crew $8,000 diamond name buckles, man. Word is that you gave Big Daddy Kane 50000 to perform at the boat party, man. No, I didn't give Daddy all that much. your swimming pool, man. Yeah, that's what they say, man. That's what they say. I wonder, wonder where they got that from. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Okay. How you feel about Calvin Klein using your swimming pool in their commercials, man? I don't know, man. I got to talk to Calvin about that, man. Yeah, they say, you know, they got the people swimming in your pool, your obsession pool, you know? Yeah, I got to talk to Calvin about that, man. You know, he hasn't returned my calls, man, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> scare you guys but you know you know I kicked that real shit you know um so I'm gonna tell you a story right there's a guy his name is boy George um Eve Rivera is it so let me call this segment um close but no cigar right so there's a guy his name is boy George he was the biggest biggest He's like, when you when you do your history, he's like, you know, equivalent to like BMF for the Latinos. This kid, anywhere he went, anywhere he met, he went, he made uh, millions and millions of dollars anywhere, right? So back in the days in the Bronx, it wasn't like now. It, w it looked like it was a, a burnt down, like it was a battle zone, like they dropped bombs on it. And um, so Boy George was like, his rumors, everything, not just rumors, he was getting the most money in the world. I was a young dude on the come up. So, and also, if you notice, you could be walking through the same block for 10 years and you could see Bummy Chito, Bummy Joselito, or whoever. And then one day you walk through that block and it's like 10 Mercedes Benz and Beamers. You knew that Boy George touched that and he had that Midas touch. Right? So, you know, boy George, living legend. So here goes Joe Crack. Um, if you let me tell it, the most likely not to succeed, maybe 15, 16 years old. Um, but anybody on my age group, wherever you from, you knew who Joe Crack is. I was putting in that work, TS, legendary on them streets. So it wasn't like I was big yet. I wasn't no big time. Yeah, I was getting a couple of dollars, maybe a G, you know, a couple of hundred. So I remember one time I was on Brook Avenue. This is way before we was getting real money, right? It, it, but but 
I gave somebody something. They owe me like $200. So, you know, I was chasing the kid around the car. I beat him up because he didn't want to pay. I was beating him up. And just like music, just like the Joker show, when Fat Joe used to beat guys up in them days, I would make a movie in front of everybody. Just make sure everybody know I'm putting in that work. So I remember beating them up, making a movie. So a truck goes by and it got tinted windows. The window comes down and the dude pulled up. He had the same kind of beard I got now. And he just looked and he pulled off. He was in a brand new ill truck, right? Fly to death rims, one of the flyest trucks you ever seen. Now he leaves. Give it a week later. Shout out to Billy Blanco. Give it a week later. I'm in um, Cortland Avenue. So, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, a lot of people barely could hustle where they from. Fat Joe was trying to get money everywhere I'm not supposed to. So Cortland Avenue was a major strip. I don't know how to explain it to y'all. It was like Wall Street. Brook Avenue, same thing. Wall Street of hustling. So... I'm out there. God owes me $100. I don't know why they wanted to jerk me. His name was Oogie, I'm going to tell you. So I'm chasing him around the car, trying to beat him up. The thing is, Cortland Crew, TS, we got tight, Morris High School. So we was like family. Um, so I'm chasing this kid. I'm trying to beat the kid up. And out of nowhere, a dude comes out the dark. And he says, yo, man, what's up with this fat kid? So I turn around. I'm like, yo, my man, who the fuck you talking to? He said, yo, I'm talking to you. I kill your fucking family. So I'm like, damn, like, you know, dudes wasn't, people ain't even used to talk like that or joke like that. So I'm like, belly, belly blanco. I'm like, yo, my man, fuck you, nigga. What you want to do, bitch ass nigga? So I'm talking all that shit. But as he walks up, he said, yo, I kill you. So the guy I'm chasing, Oogie jumps on me. He goes, no, no, Joe. And I'm like, looking at him, he's like, it's Boy George. So I'm like, oh, my God, Boy George. So I turn around. I go up to Boy George. I said, George, please don't kill my family. Don't kill my family. Please. Please don't kill my mother. Please. Fuck you, fat nigga. You think you tough. You think you somebody. This, this, that. So boom, I bow down. Way out of my league. Way out of my league, right? I'm only 15, 16. This guy's the biggest kingpin in New York City. I knew, hold up, right? So now, I squash it, you know, I walk my way, thank you to Cortland crew, they, <laughs> they convinced them, y'all, leave Joe alone, whatever the case may be, right? So now, give it like a, a month later, everybody going, so, so we used to go to the clubs, everybody who hustled in the Bronx, we would go 30 deep. So like the Forest crew, we was 30 deep. Everybody, Cortland 30, Cypress 30, Brook 30, the, uh, Creston 30, t 30, like Highbridge 30. So, so everybody's meeting up, all the fly dudes who get money. Let's meet up, let's go to the club together because Brooklyn used to be in them clubs really, really deep. So we had to go in there crazy deep. So we in there maybe 300 deep, the whole Bronx, Southern Boulevard, everybody's in there. Right? Soundview, Seven Boulevard, Watson, whatever you name, the Bronx is there. So I'm in the club, and of course, like it always happens, it turns into a riot. This is when um this is when they used to have bouncers, bro. Did you ever seen that movie 300 Brolic? These motherfuckers had not six packs, ten packs, was the size of seven foot tall niggas. They was fucking people up, right? So we get into a riot. This is the, They had like the smoke, the fog. So we just, everybody's brawling. Boom, boom. Everybody's brawling. And me, I love to fight. I woke up every day to fight back in the days. I wasn't a professional boxer, but I like to think I had hands and I was giving people the business. So all of a sudden, we fighting and I'm fighting. And like a movie, I got my back. The name of the club, I think it was uh, Emerald City. I think it was Emerald City. Turn around, it's Boy George. 
And um, and he turns around and he looks at me. Remind, remind you, I'm only a young kid, 16 years old, whatever the case may be. He turns around. This is Manhattan. He turns around. He looks at me. He says, "Yo, my man." And I was like, "Yo, I'm Joey Crack, Fat Joe." He was like, "Yo, I like you, man. I like you." He said, "I'm going out of town, and um, when I get back, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna come see you." Now, to anybody else in the world, that meant you on hundred Benzes, Dapper Dan suits chains, playing soccer in the middle of the street, everybody going to great adventures, you name it. You name it, you was on. So I'm like, oh shit, I almost couldn't sleep. I was like, oh, it's it, it's on. And it's no coincidence that I'm Fat Joe now. I always been aggressive. I was thirsty to blow. I always would have did anything to blow. I had to get mines, rich or die trying. And um, so give it a couple of days. I'm at Far's Projects, and I'm sitting on top of the, the post office box, the blue box where you put in your mail. And the dude walks over from my way, be like, yo, you heard? I'm like, yo, what? And he says, boy, George. They caught boy George. Man, he's on the newspaper. Youngest kingpin, the feds got him. I was like, no! No! So um, I was like, I, I remember I actually said, I want to go to jail with him. I want to go to jail with him. Like, that's how much I wanted to get on, and I knew he could change my life. And he got locked up. And you know the infamous, this guy threw birthday parties on a yacht. Uh, all the wait waiters and waitresses was feds. And he was giving people presents for, like, the number one spots, giving them gold buckles with diamonds. It's just, you know, having guys sing for them. You know, Big Daddy Kane. This is most legendary shit. They wrote about it. You Google him. And uh, so he got locked up. That was my opportunity, I thought it was, for me to blow. And it never happened. And I was that close to being, like, a kingpin at 16. But that never happened, Right? Now I'll tell you modern day, uh, and I know OG be sneaking in on, the, on this live right here. And I'm going to tell you modern day, it's the story of my life, guys, right? So I've always made great money, and I'm grateful to God, but it's always been the story of my life where, you know, I ain't get that 200, 300 mil. Like, I've been trying to get that, right? So fast forward forward maybe three years ago, after all the way up, um, I got, uh, and I always wondered if Boy George remember that story. And he did a story in Don Devo, one of the only story he ever did. And at the end, he shouted me out, yo, my brother Fat Joe, si got palante. I remember you. And I was like, oh, shit, he remembers that, right? So, boom, fast forward forward. Three years ago, at, right after all the way up and all that, I signed with Rock Nation Management. So, Jay-Z and uh, Rock Nation was doing a deal. This is way before controversy of Harvey Weinstein. Way before controversy. This is not, you know, this is when nobody knew what it was. But they were going to do a, a deal with him like an American Idol or something. Right? And for some reason, they put me in the deal. They said, Joe's going to be Jay-Z's partner. They put me in the deal, and it was going to be like a songwriter. I can't tell you all the details, but let's just say an American idol. I'll be the judge. I get paid for that. Plus, I own anybody who wins the contest. I sign them. You know, shit like that, right? So I'm going to the Weinstein Company every week. I'm flying to L.A. every week to meet with these people. Yo, this, this, that. So then it gets down to it where they say, we're going to put this show on TV. I don't know what channel, maybe NBC, ABC, whatever. They had the deal set up. And, um, and I sat in there and they started giving the projections for like how much money the show was going to make. 
So they was like, by the third year, you know, you guys will be making a hundred million. If it goes five years, you most likely be making three hundred. I was like, they literally were saying three hundred million and shit like this. Now let me explain to you. You know how you in the office and they got a table where everybody sits around. I lost my cool so much. You know the table, like a table. It has legs. The legs in the table. I slipped under and started grabbing the legs of the table. Like, oh my God. I start screaming, oh my God, oh my God. I'm grabbing the legs of the table in front of everybody. Please, Jesus Christ, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Like, I, I, I couldn't even. Hey, yo, Rich Player was here. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, guys. So I go, we end that meeting. That's it. That's it. That's it. Joe Crack's going to have 100 million, 200 million. Fuck you. I got it. I live in Bahamas, eating mangoes on the beach. So I walk to my hotel. Rich Player's following me. And I just can't even sit in the car. I got to walk. Right? So I'm so crazy. I'm wilding. I can't believe it. And I go, this is amazing. I fly back to New York. Two days later, Harvey Weinstein is on the news. Breaking news, production company of the world, Harvey Weinstein is getting locked up or whatever. The rape, the Me Too movement, the this, the that, the this, this. I'm like, Jesus. Christ, no fucking way. So I call up Rock Nation and I speak to, to my boss and I'm like, tell me. So before I get the talk, she says, yeah, Joe, that's the guy. I'm like, no fucking way. No way. That's the guy. I'm like, but well, could we deal? Could we do it with some? Nah, we can't fuck with these people no more. I'm like, please. Look at it. We almost had it again. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> Ruben Diaz says, it's God's way of protecting you, Joe. Yo, man. Yo, I can't get it. Like, I'm grateful, man. I thank God for everything I got. But, yo, know, I can't get the 100 million, the 200, 300 million. Um, this shit, this shit crazy, man. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, I hope I gave you some good laughs or whatever. The, close, but no cigar. What you know about that shit? Ain't that a bitch? You ain't bullshitting, yo, Ruben Diaz. Ain't that some shit, man? This fucking close, man. This fucking close, man.